Hey, how's it going? And today I wanted to do an update to a tutorial I just did on the actor component. And in that tutorial, I used a blueprint interface and we used also property binding on the widget blueprint. And I realized that wasn't the most efficient way to do it. And so I wanted to redo the tutorial using the event dispatcher. A while back, I forgot I made a promise to myself that I was going to use event dispatchers whenever I could. And I, a lot of times I break that promise, but I'm trying to get in the habit of using an event dispatcher because it doesn't respond on ticks. It just responds when an event is triggered. Just to get started, we're going to create the actor component first. So I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class, and we're going to create an actor component. And I'm just going to call this viewport comp. And I'm just creating it right now so I can refer to it. We'll build the logic inside of it at the very end. Let's go ahead and save. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a very basic widget blueprint. So I'm going to right click again and I'm going to go to user interface, widget blueprint, user widget. And I'll just leave it called new widget blueprint. And here, this is like I said, just bare bones. We're going to go to a canvas panel, drag that onto the scene. Then we're just going to get some text. And we're just going to drag that onto the scene. And we're going to come over here to font and just make the font a little bit bigger like that and we'll size the content and make sure it's set to variable and make sure remember the name of it it's called text block underscore zero and we'll just compile and save and believe it or not that's all we need to do for our widget now that we have our actor component created we can go into our third person player right here the third person and we're just going to add that. So once we create an actor component, we can add it to any actor. So I'm just going to go add, and it's called viewport comp right there. And it's now it's added that whatever functionality we put into that component will now be in here. So we can just go compile and save, and we're actually done with that. So now we can come back here to the content level and all we need to do is create our trigger device. So what I'm going to do is right click, create one more blueprint here. It's going to be an actor and I'm going to call this BP underscore trigger device like that. And then I'm just going to double click into it and we'll just dock this real quick up here. There's not much in here. We're just going to get a box collision right there. Click on it. We're going to come down here to on component begin overlap and we just need to get a reference to that actor component that we just made and there's several nodes that we can use to do that. We're just going to drag off of other actor and I'm going to search for get component by class and here we're just going to make a reference to our viewport component that we just made right there. Now this blueprint is going to be the one that we drag into the scene and it's going to be the trigger device. So it's actually not only going to trigger to send the signal from the event dispatcher, it's also going to hold our text data. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create that in just right now. So we're going to create our event dispatcher. I'm just going to leave it called new event dispatcher. And then I'm just going to drag this onto the scene like this. Whoops. Drag it onto the scene like that. Let go. Go call. And that's the same as broadcast or send a signal. Now, if I click the event dispatcher, I can add an input for data. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this text. And we're going to go ahead and set it to text data type. And with that created, I can click right here and just promote that to a variable over here. We'll leave it called text. We just need to set it to instance editable or public so we can add to it in the editor and then all we need to do here let me just scoot this down is just hook this up right there like that and this is not connected those are two separate things and basically we're done with our trigger device so the last thing that we need to do is just build out the logic in our viewport component and there's just a few things in here that are kind of interesting to do we need to create a couple references and things like that so let's go ahead and click in here and finish this up. So this is going to actually start off of an event begin play. And the first thing that we need to do is actually make a reference to our blueprint trigger device. 
so that we can bind to the event dispatcher. And in that way, we're basically creating a receiver for the signal that it's going to broadcast out. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to right click and get actor of class. Get actor of class and it's going to be our BP trigger device right there. And I'm just going to put that in there like that. Now, once this connection, this reference is established, then what I can do is bind to that. But there's also a setting called assign, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to just drag off of here and go assign. And it's going to be, I think it's called new event dispatcher right here. And you'll see how it comes in wired up all. Now I made a mistake on this in the past and you'll see there's an execution pin here, but we don't have to worry about any further execution because we have this now. So the execution is going to continue from here, not up here. So that is good to know. And we're basically going to just create our a reference to our user widget blueprint now and get that all going. So what we're going to do, and you notice here we have our text that we can access. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag off of here and go create widget. And really what this does when it creates widget is really creating a reference to that new widget blueprint right there. And the owning player is going to be the player controller. So get player controller. There's only one player controller per player. So that goes there and that's all wired up. And now once we have this reference to the widget blueprint, we can get that text variable. So I'm just going to go get text right there. And once we have that reference, then we can set the text. So here I'm just going to go set text right there like that. And if I just move this around a little bit, maybe move this down here, I can just plug this text straight into here like that. And then this is going to go in there. Now I thought it would be fun to, you always see people adding to the viewport, but you can actually add to the player screen. And for a lot of purposes, it's pretty much the same thing. I think that the add to player screen is used if you want to create a split screen because it has, so what we're going to do is we're going to drag off of here and go add to player screen right there. And if you click there, you'll see you've got the Z order option. And I don't think we have that on the add to viewport. Let's see, add to viewport. No. Oops, I gotta drag off of here to see. I'm just, I just wanna check that out of curiosity. The add to viewport. Add to viewport. I don't believe we do, but it could prove me wrong. No, it has the order too. So it looks like the one difference is that this gives a return value that this doesn't, right? But you'll see the target is the user widget the same. So I guess they do both have the, except this has a return value. So I would imagine that's fed into a Boolean or a branch or something like that. Okay, so that's good to know. So there's no harm in using this just to be different. And we'll plug that in there. And then we're just going to create a little bit of a delay. So I'm going to drag off of here and go delay. And you can make this for as long as you want the message to be on the screen, not too long, but we'll put three seconds there. And then the last thing is we just need to remove this from the widget. So I'm just going to drag off of here again and we'll go remove from parent actually. And then this can go up in here. So I'm actually pulling, look at that, I'm pulling three references off this one node. Interesting, huh? And that's, as far as I know, that's the whole thing. So let me get, show you these all in one screenshot there. And here is where I would, was making some mistakes here. But notice that this exact execution ends here and then jumps to down here. Okay, and then we compile and save. And then all we do, now we have our trigger device. We can put as many of these in the scene as we want. We can customize the size of the trigger volume. 
and we can put any text message we want. Just in the interest of time, I'm just going to drag in one. And then I'm going to hit the space bar and we're going to resize this here a little bit like that. And then we have our text over here and I'm just going to say it works. And let's, I hope that's not too presumptuous. And we're going to go hit play and let's see if it works. And it does work. And it should just only be on there for three seconds. And then if I cross it again, of course, it's going to go again. It works. And that's all I had for today. So I hope you found it helpful. Take care. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you next time.